the acid, guess where your body gets the necessary calcium to neutralize it? From your bones. Do you see the vicious cycle? Here you are believing you need calcium for strong bones, but you've been deluded into believing that dairy is your best source of calcium. So you ingest the dairy that you can't digest from an animal that isn't human and contains all sorts of things that make you sick. And when you ingest it, you make your body acidic. And in order to neutralize the acid from the dairy product, your body pulls the calcium out of your bones, which defeats your reason for ingesting it in the first place. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Doesn't it bother you that an entire industry has been built around this delusion? And doesn't it bother you even more that your health has been sacrificed in the process? Do you see how illogical it is? We'd all be better off if we just stopped putting dairy into our potties when we can eat solid food. Now, I suspect that this is about the time where you're thinking, but I love dairy products. Yeah, you probably love your cheese, your ice cream, and your cream and your coffee. Well, that my dear, is called an addiction. Don't you think the dairy industry knows that its products are addictive? Of course they do. That's one of the tools used to make sure you keep on eating dairy. It's everywhere. There's dairy in things you can't even imagine. It's in all desserts, which is kind of obvious most of the time, but it's also in salad dressing, you know, blue cheese, Roquefort, Caesar dressing, ranch dressing. It's in a bunch of soups, like creme of mushroom, creme of tomato, clam chowder, and cheese. It's in everything. Feta cheese on salad, cheese on baked potatoes, cheese in all the Italian foods, cheese on nachos, cheese, cheese, cheese. Lactose is even commonly present in artificial sweetener packets and in candy and in medications, both prescription and over-the-counter. So dairy has really become a ubiquitous part of your diet, whether you want it to or not. If you're vegan like I am, it is extremely difficult to avoid dairy. You have to read every label and look for every piece of information on dairy products. And you have to know all the names of the different dairy products in order to really avoid it. And believe it or not, most people in the restaurant industry aren't even aware of which foods contain dairy products. Most of them aren't even aware of what constitutes dairy in the first place. I know you think I'm kidding, but I'm not. I've been a vegan for a long time. And when I go into a restaurant and say I'm vegan, I can't have any dairy products, they'll say, well, um, cheese is okay, isn't it? Or something like that where you think, oh my God, they really don't know. So the bottom line in all this is that you are hard pressed to avoid lactose in dairy products, even though you can't digest it, and even though it makes you sick, and even though it worsens your bone health. Your human body has no more need for cow's milk than it does for dog's milk, or horse's milk, or a giraffe's milk. It only needs your own mother's milk and only until you can eat solid foods. So it's a crying shame that you've never learned the truth about dairy. So that's why I called this broadcast the dirt on dairy, because if you ask me, this whole dependence on dairy is really a dirty, dirty addiction, and you aren't even aware of it. It's been something that's been imposed upon you probably your entire life. But the cold hard fact is that the dairy industry doesn't want you to know the facts. And sadly, the information you get favors the interest of the dairy industry over your right to factual information. So it's really more the health of the dairy industry than it is about your health. Really? See, I really urge you to give this some thought and be honest with yourself about what makes sense. And I also urge you to share this broadcast with your friends and the people you love because it could save their lives. And I, I hate to be the one <laughs> delivering such unfortunate and unwelcome information, but so much of what you get elsewhere is anything but the truth. And you can always count on the truth from me. And when I talk about these things, people usually just go, Oh my God, it's all so obvious. How did I miss it? Well, because you were programmed to miss it. I mean, 
society, the whole structure of the food industry, the way our systems work, the goal is for you to miss it. <laughs> the goal is for you to think that all the wrong things are good for you. But if you stop and really think about it the way I have presented it, and, and there's certain little points where, you know, when you think about humans being the only animals who ingest dairy products, it kind of makes you go, huh, that's odd. And then when you think, well, why are we ingesting the cow's milk? The cow's milk is for the cow to get great big hundreds of pounds. And it's a different animal that will put all kinds of things in our body that our body doesn't need. When you start thinking that way, you go, oh, my gosh, it does make sense. And then when you realize that most adults can't digest it, it makes you start going, oh, Lord, this is this is such a big deal. Well, that's why I present it that way, because, you know, simply coming out and just saying to you, dairy is bad. I mean, that doesn't tell you anything. Why should you believe me or anybody if I just say dairy is bad? Dairy is bad for what? It's got, is it good for anything? Well, see, you, you can make those decisions yourself, but I give you facts. And the fact is, there's no other animal on earth that continues to ingest any dairy product after it's weaned. And the only dairy product it ever ingests is its own mother's milk. And only until it can eat solid food. That's what humans are supposed to do, too. <laughs> and the only way you can do it now is to make the decision to do it and then avoid all the dairy in your diet. And beware of the hidden dairy everywhere around you because it doesn't do anything good for you. And if you are, quote, lactose intolerant, you're normal. You're supposed to be lactose intolerant. You were supposed to become lactose intolerant when you were about two years old. But the fact that you kept putting dairy in your body made your body keep trying, trying, trying to digest it unnaturally against its will. And that forced effort has made it possible for you to continue ingesting dairy. But at some point in your life, your body just starts rebelling, going, I just can't do this anymore. Why do you keep, keep, keep pushing dairy on me? So I hope this podcast hasn't shocked you completely. <laughs> some, of the, some of the talks I give shock people because they are so brutal in terms of honesty and truth and facts. And... Um, you know, some people don't want to hear the facts. Some people don't want to hear that they their dairy is bad for them because <laughs> they love their dairy. Well, you know what? This is all about choices. This is about you're doing whatever you want. I just want you to do it with actual, good, factual information. If you really do want to have your dairy, that's your prerogative. You can do it, but you will do so with the facts and knowledge, and you'll know what you're doing, and you'll decide that you're willing to deal with whatever comes of that. And my goal is to help you on your terms. You know, I don't judge people for what they choose to do for managing their menopause. I love helping women on any terms, under any circumstance. Whatever you will do to work for you, that's what I'm going to help you do. And if that means you want your dairy, then we'll find a way for you to have your dairy and do everything that you can accomplish by omitting dairy in other ways to the best of your ability. That's what this is about. It's all about trade-offs. Everything you do is a trade-off. Everything you, Every decision you make is deciding not to do something else. And that's what this whole menopause management is all about because you get to pick and choose. And there's this great big smorgasbord of options, and your job is to find the ones that work best for you. So I invite you to go to my website. It's menopausetaylor.me. You will love it, love it, love it. You'll find that I do one-on-one -on -one consultations, and you can schedule one right there, and I will help you with anything, and I will let you send me all kinds of information so that I can cover all the bases and tailor everything just to you. It, they're wonderful. The consultations are just wonderful. But you'll also find that there's a book that I've written, and the second edition is available now. And you'll find that I write articles and you'll find my seminar on DVD and in webinars. And you'll find a DVD for your man called Menopause 101 for Men. Because, you know, they need to know what's going on here, too. It teaches them a little bit. But in a nutshell, it's, in a, it's, it's menopause in a flash for them. <laughs> so I will leave you now. Please tune in to the next broadcast. You'll find out all kinds of things about spices. And so I'll... Talk to you again then. Thank you for coming, and I hope you come back again soon. Bye.